Hey guys, I know this is a car channel, but I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about basement block wall repair. Now, trust me, at some point in your life, this information is going to be useful to you or somebody that you know. Because when you get cracks in your basement walls, it can be very, very expensive to repair. Now that you can do it yourself, if you know how to do it, and you know where to get the right supplies. So that's what this video is about, so please stay tuned. Now I'm going to admit when my basement walls started to crack, I got extremely frustrated. I did call a couple of companies to come in here and look at these walls. You can see I've got a ladder crack here, uh, and uh, I've got a horizontal crack over there, and a vertical crack over there. Here you can see a close-up of the ladder cracking. Uh, this is on one side of the basement in my main house, and uh, it is a sign of structural failure. It's a pretty severe crack there. This is the other side of the same building uh, with a similar ladder crack with some other small cracks going all the way floor to ceiling. Now there's some significant movement there you can see in that top crack. This is over on the other side of the house, a side wall. You can see that there's some uh, center bowing at about ground level on the outside. A uh, significant horizontal crack Again, there's some structural failure there. What I have here is from here to the other side of the house, I have about one inch of deflection coming in on the wall this way. Okay, so the ground outside is pushing the wall inward. Because this wall is coming in, it sounds like the right solution is the rods, like AFS said. The problem is, I have a septic system on the other side of this wall. The other problem is AFS quoted me about $15,000 to fix this structure. I also have a house out back that has the same problems, so it's another $15,000 for that structure. Altogether, it was about $30,000 in repairs for the two structures just to fix the cracking block walls and to straighten them out. Another company that I called, they came in and told me use carbon fiber. Now I've worked with a lot of carbon fiber, carbon fiber Kevlar as well. Now their solution is to come in here and lay carbon fiber against the wall, put an epoxy resin on it, and what that'll do is that'll keep these cracks from opening up. Now that is true. Carbon fiber will keep the cracks from getting worse. Problem is, it doesn't fix the problem. Okay, the, the wall, the entire wall is coming in from the top. So the carbon fiber really isn't going to arrest the problem or correct the problem. It will arrest the problem. It won't correct the problem. So what I needed to do was find a solution that, that returned the wall to the original position. Uh, it wasn't a carbon fiber, and it didn't mean drilling through the wall into the yard into my septic system. Another issue that I have is I have truss floors, right? So you can see that this floor has come in about an inch here, and I need to be able to push that back. Problem is you can't really put any pressure against the truss, truss floor in this direction. It'll basically fold these trusses over and lay them that way. The solution I came up with was pretty simple when I started looking at what was available out on the market. So the solution I settled on was the Gorilla Wall Brace from Resh Enterprises. These are about $140 a piece, so they're not cheap, but they do give you a little bit of a break if you buy a bunch of them, and they give you free shipping if you buy a bunch. So basically, this is a traditional steel beam wall brace, and uh, it's a reasonably easy install. The only issue with this is you have to carry the load back into a main structural member or you'll just fold over your floor braces. So that's what I did, and I'll show you a quick shot of that. Now because I have a truss floor, I had to come up with a different solution for installing these wall braces. So I had to put some cross carriers across the uh, floor trusses and pick up a large central beam that braced against both walls on each side. So this is a... Uh, this is the product here, Gorilla Wall Braces from Resh Enterprises. And uh, to be clear, 
I'm not sponsored, not affiliated in any way with these guys. They just happen to be the solution that I settled on. So this is the wall brace here, and this is a shot of one installed. Two bolts go into place. There's a steel backing plate up here, and it pushes against the beam, and the beam slowly straightens the wall out over time. You can just tighten this nut to keep, it, keep the pressure on your wall. Uh, probably the most time-consuming part in the install on this wall brace is installing the, the support braces, the wooden support braces, to make sure that you're not going to ruin your house when you start putting pressure on it. So you have to make sure, have an engineer look at it, and make sure that you're not going to move your structure when you start pushing against these walls. On the bottom, they're secured with a couple of, of Hilti bolts, and I'll show you guys that really quickly. So the bottom plate, the beam sits on the bottom plate, and you just take your Hilti. If you don't have a Hilti, you can rent one from Home Depot or Lowe's. They supply you with a drill bit, and you drill down through this bracket, and you install the supplied bolts. It's pretty easy. So that's a beam that's installed. I just have to put these bolts into place, and it's all done. So it's a pretty quick and easy solution here. There's also another product that they supply that it, it uh, it's it's for if the beams are running perpendicular to your wall. So I'll show you that product. So this is a video sequence of me installing their perpendicular wall brace system. You can see that the floor braces, are, the floor joists are going perpendicular to the basement wall that I'm trying to push back. These are the same price as the other system and I really like how these install. So the main plate goes against the beam and then these rods you can see that I'm working with here uh, they brace against the adjoining or the nearby floor braces so they use some bolts you drill through the floor joist you put the bolts through and then you uh, bolt those bars to the uh, nearby floor joist to brace it and then when you install your beam you're pushing against three floor joists instead of just one floor joist so here I'm installing the beam up to the floor joist. When I get it in place, I'll install the safety zip tie to make sure it doesn't fall on my full head. And then I go down to the bottom and I'll kick the floor bracket into position. Got to lift up on the beam and kick this floor bracket into position. It took a little bit of doing because, you know, that beam's pretty heavy. At that point, I'll go in and I'll measure and uh, I'll square it up and mark with a sharpie where the holes are so that I'm ready to drill with my Hilti. I'll tap the beam off to the side and you'll see my little marks there and I'll go to work with a Hilti drill. Now they supply the bit with the Hilti drill so that's ready to go. You might have to rent a, a drill if you, have, if you don't have one. Um, now keep in mind don't lean on the drill just let the drill, the Hilti, do its work. On the other side, I actually put the floor bracket into position and bolt it with the, uh, with the supplied bolt and uh, drill the other hole. So once you're done drilling the second hole, put the beam back into position. Might take a little bit of coaxing with a thumb finder. Slide that over and then take the supplied bolt, put it into place. Now I use an impact, uh, an impact gun a DeWalt impact. If you don't have one of these, you should probably have one in your arsenal. They're pretty amazing. So that's it. All right, well, all I did after that was I marked a couple of spots on my wall, and I measured that with a vernier caliper to make sure that I knew what the gaps were prior to tensioning the beams. Okay, so those, those long nuts on the top, I tensioned those down to close the gap up. I did see a little bit of movement initially, uh, not a lot, but it did move a little bit. And, uh, but I will be tracking that over time and writing on the wall with a Sharpie marker what the measurements are so I can keep track of where we're at. Well, I wanted to thank you guys very much for watching the video if you made it this far. Thank you for subscribing if you're already subscribed. If you're not subscribed, please feel free to subscribe to my videos. I will be posting a lot more videos in the future. There'll be some DIY videos, some car-related videos, and some travel-related videos. So... 
Again, thanks a lot, guys, for watching.